today we're taking a look at the lung meridian and the lung meridian has 11 points. It originates in the middle jowl. Uh, the first point that we can access is on the lateral chest and it travels down to the thumb. So number one is on the chest and number 11 is on the thumb. And using our sonometer we will use the and most people will use the regular measuring side, which goes from the, uh, 0 to 20. And the distance from the manubrial notch to the bone of the shoulder here, not don't include the tissue because people have varying amounts of tissue here, just find the edge of the bone. And how you can do that is you can press and follow it out and you'll feel where it drops off. And that's where you're going to measure. Okay. So I want to, I want, that's 8 sun. Okay. The only way to measure it is to know that it's 8 sun. And so you start with your zero here, find your eight, and then you want to stretch that to meet the edge of the bone. So my patient's six sin line is here. The easiest way to locate lung one is to locate lung two first. So lung two is six sin lateral to the midline and just below the collarbone. Now, one of the great ways to locate this is have the patient extend their arm when she extends her arm, you can see the muscle here, and we'll actually land a little bit inside that muscle, and that's actually where we want to be. Here is the clavicle. Okay, I want to be just under that for lung two, and then right here in this depression on the edge of the, the muscle. So when she lowers her arm back down, that puts us right here. So that is lung two, and really how we locate that is we go one sun. So that's the width of her thumb. So I can check my thumb against hers, and they're the same size. So when I measure down from that, I end up here. That's lung one and lung two. Lung one is located on the lateral chest in the first intercostal space, six sun lateral to the midline, and it's found one sun inferior to lung two. Lung two is located on the lateral chest below the lateral extremity of the clavicle, also six sin lateral to the midline, in the center of the hollow of the delto pectoral triangle. When we locate these, we use the deltoid muscle, and so you'll see in the book that lung one is just slightly more lateral than lung two. Those two are the only ones on the chest for lung. Lung three is the first lung point that's on the arm. The distance from the axillary fold to the cubital fold is nine sun. And if I measure that with my sunometer, I'm gonna put my zero here and nine, I'm gonna to stretch to the cubital fold. And lung three is three sun from the axillary fold. Let me just redo that to make sure I got it right. I have help. <laughs> Okay, so I'm looking for my three sun line. I find that right here. I can't just say three sun and that's it. I have to locate uh, at this level on the arm or at this distance from the axillary fold, I have to locate the meridian. And so the easiest way is to kind of turn the arm out and then find the biceps. And we want to be outside of the biceps. So right here. And you can see that there's a, a easy to find space because we're on the lateral, the biceps muscle, the lateral side. So I'm just going to check it one more time since we moved the arm. Okay, there's three here. This is on the muscle, but I want to be lateral to it. You can see that there's a space there, a gap. So that's where I can find lung three. And then lung four, easy to locate. Once you know where lung three is, it's one sun inferior or distal to lung three. Distal is the more accurate term to use on a limb. So I can measure, got my three sun. I'm just gonna go one more sun, which I find at this level. And again, I'm gonna palpate following that space, the lateral border of the biceps muscle. Four. So for three and four, we use the sonometer. 
and we can also locate it by um, approximate distancing because I know that this is 9 sun. 3 would be one third the distance from the axillary fold to the cubital fold. You can try using the 3 sun measure, the 4 fingers, but I want to compare that to my patients. So fingers together, I'll put my fingers here, mine's a little bit wider. About half of my pinky. So I can go with half of my pinky, and that gets me three, right? Do that again, I have to overlap my two, and for the most part that gets me to the cubital fold. The tsunometer is more accurate when you use it correctly. So in the first semester, we use the tsunometer. After this, you know, your teacher may want you to use it or may not. It's just to get you practiced in seeing the distances and being accurate. Now lung five, we find it, we're gonna look for the biceps tendon. Okay, so this is the cubital fold or the cubital crease. And I just wanna have my patient bend her arm with a little bit of resistance. So I'm gonna hold up the wrist, she's gonna bend and we can see that there's a tendon right here. Okay, that's the tendon we're using and we're gonna go just lateral to it. So I'm going to the thumb side, thumb side is really the radial side, and that's the better terminology to use, so I want to be careful that I use that correct terminology. So the radial side of the biceps tendon, radial side. Okay, five. So no tsunometer there, that's just by body palpation. Okay, lung six is located on the flexor side of the forearm. 7 sun proximal to lung 9 on the line connecting lung 9 to lung 5. So what we have to do is find lung 9 first in order to do this accurately. Okay, lung 9 we palpate by the wrist and lung travels here on the radial side. The radial side is the thumb side. Okay, so we're going to go to the wrist crease here, the main wrist crease that has a deeper um, crease when we bend the wrist and we want to be on the thumb side and if we come over here there's a tendon here and then you come more to this is the flexor side the flexor side flexes the palm towards the body or flexes the palm towards the elbow um, this movement is extension if you bring the dorsum of the hand backwards that's extension going this way is flexion flexion extension flexion extension so this is the flexor side. So right here is lung nine. So I wanna go ahead and mark that because I'm using the line from lung nine to lung five. Okay, lung nine. So on the line drawn from lung nine to lung five, Lung six is located seven sun proximal to lung nine. So if I'm counting from lung nine to lung five, it's easier for me if I put my zero here and the distance from the wrist crease to the cubital fold is 12 sun. So the 12 actually gets us to here. So I've got to stretch it a little bit. And I want to find my seven, which is here. And that gets me the distance from my zero to that distance on the arm but it doesn't tell me exactly where to go. So I wanna be on the line from lung nine to lung five, which when we measure it that way, it does, uh, it is accurate as far as the meridian. Okay. Now, next on our numbering, we've got five, six, we need seven. Seven is actually called broken sequence. Lung seven is located on the radial side of the forearm and it's approximately 1.5 sun proximal to LI5 large intestine 5, so I have to show you where that is, in a cleft between the tendons of brachioradialis and abductor pollicis longus. So I'm going to show you how to locate that. So it's actually located on this side. If you were to put your thumb up, that's a great position to start in because right here, I wonder if I can show you that, 
you can see a little shadow. That's actually where large intestine five is located. So I'm going to locate that here. I'll do lung five or large intestine five in red, so we know that that's not one of our lung points. And then I'm going to palpate. Okay, what I'm trying to feel for is the bump of the radial bone here. And if I go to this spot right here, the soft spot where the wrist and the hand meet, and I go towards the elbow, I find a bump there. Okay. As I go over that bump, I can feel that the bone has a curve to it when I go to the flexor side. Okay, I basically want to go kind of towards that curve where it becomes a little bit more straight and be on this side, okay, the radial side of the radial bone, and I can feel that there's two tendons there, and that's actually where my needle's going to go. It's right next to a blood vessel. So that's lung 7. And the name of lung 7 is broken sequence. And you can see that it's, in a, it's got a broken sequence because it doesn't follow the line from lung 5 to lung 9. Okay, now back in sequence with lung 8, how we locate this is I'm feeling, I'm going from lung 9, I'm feeling for the radial bone, and I go just over the bone. Okay, just over the bone, and when it drops off, that's lung 8. On some people, lung 8 and lung 7 are really close, okay? On some people, they're a little bit further apart. Okay. Now lung 10 is on the first metacarpal. So the first metacarpal is here. I find one end of the bone and the other end of the bone. I go to the halfway point. And in the book, it shows you that the point is here, okay? That's basically the depth that we want to get to. But the palm skin is super duper sensitive, and so a way to treat that point is to come from the side at the midpoint of the bone and needle from this side, okay? So that's 10. And then 11 is on the thumb on the radial side. So if this is the radial side of the arm, this is the radial side of the thumb. I'm going to use my other hand, radial side, and so I'm just going to put a dot next to the nail bed, and that is lung 11. Okay, lung 1 and 2, you can use your sonometer to measure the distance of 6 sun, or you can use the edge of the deltoid muscle here, and that's actually what we're seeing in the book, because we find that lung 1 is just slightly lateral to lung 2. First intercostal space, and lung two is just under the clavicle. Okay, so we measure from the midline to the edge of the bone, not the tissue. People have varying amounts of tissue, and so we want to measure to the edge of the bone. Lung three and four are on the upper arm. You can use your sonometer to locate those, or you can do some measurement by going in thirds. And then lung five, no uh, sonometer needed. We locate that one through palpation. You find the biceps tendon and go to just to the radial side of that in a soft spot. Lung six is found on the line drawn from lung nine to lung five in a seven sun proximal. So we measure seven sun and that's where we locate it. Lung seven is called broken sequence. We locate that on the radial side of the radial bone we first have to know where lung, large intestine 5 is, okay, and that's actually called the anatomical snuff box. And there's two tendons here. If you bring your thumb back, can you do that please? Yeah, just your thumb like this. We can see the tendons come up here and there's a soft spot in between, okay. And I measure approximately 1.5 sun, but we really do that one by palpation. And then lung 8 is found 1 sun proximal to 9, approximately. So we go from lung 9, we go over the bone, and when it drops off the bone, that's lung 8. Lung 9 is found in the wrist crease. Find this tendon for, to the thumb and come to the flexor side, the soft spot there. 10, the book will show you an image here. Instead of needling from this side, we needle from here, and we needle into the muscle to that depth. And then lung 11 is located on the 
um, radial side. So this is the radial side of the thumb. Okay, 111. 